You can argue that mainstream pro wrestling in the current day is going through a bit of a renaissance. Within the past year and some change, WWE has written some of the most compelling storylines spearheaded by quality character development. And while AEW seems to have plateaued in some departments compared to their early years, they have proven to be an entertaining mainstream alternative. Both have their formulas for their respective audiences that work, for the most part. Cody Rhodes with the fight of his life. But in the end, Roman Reigns has done it again. No, God, please, no, 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 no. While fans are naturally attracted to dramatic stories that blur the lines of what's real and what's fiction, suspension of disbelief, whether fully or partially, is still required. Well, what if there was a wrestling company or league that ditched the style of pro wrestling television that we all grew accustomed to? What if there was a wrestling show that leaned more into a cinematic-driven TV drama format? One where it came across as a live-action comic book series instead of a glamorous Broadway show involving body slams. Personally, there's no need to imagine because that's exactly how Lucha Underground came across to me as I watched it and I was instantly hooked. If you're a pro wrestling fan who doesn't mind some absurdity in your grappling product and you haven't gone out of your way to watch Lucha Underground, you're honestly doing yourself a disservice in my opinion. While the show only ran for four seasons over the course of four years, the reception it's received in its fairly short lifespan cannot be overlooked. At the time, critics praised the show for its fresh take on the pro wrestling industry. People had plenty of good things to say about it during its time, but should you watch it now? Well, first off, if you take pro wrestling too seriously, then no, probably not. I'll elaborate further on that later, but for now, let's take a dive into Lucha Underground, starting with its production format and Inception. In January of 2014, Mark Burnett of MGM would form a figurative tag team with El Rey Network's Robert Rodriguez to produce a weekly hour-long pro wrestling television series in affiliation with Mexican-based pro wrestling company Lucha Libre AAA Worldwide, or more commonly referred to as AAA for short. Originally, Lucha Underground was titled Lucha Uprising in July 2014 before ultimately finalizing its title as Lucha Underground just a month later in August. Lucha Underground would make its television debut on the El Rey Network across the US on October 29th, 2014. It would continue to air new episodes every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. The show itself was filmed at SES Warehouse in Boyle Heights, Los Angeles, California. The venue is known as the temple in the show and features a rundown abandoned warehouse look which creates a gritty aesthetic which I absolutely love. I've always admired the aesthetic of smaller venues in pro wrestling and the temple is absolutely up there in my personal favorite venues, along with Elks Lodge, the Manhattan Center, Corican Hall, and the Impact Zone and Universal Studios, just to name a few. Also. An interesting tidbit I came across while researching the temple was that the venue can supposedly be seen in the 2010 movie Inception. In terms of segments shot outside of the ring, Lucha Underground took a cinematic heavy approach to interweave plainly obvious fictional storylines into its in-ring product, a far cry to what you would see on traditional pro wrestling programming. For example, you'll see plenty of ludicrous storylines such as one featuring reptilian humans known as the Reptile Tribe, a storyline involving a gauntlet possessed by ancient gods, undercover cops attempting to infiltrate the temple, stories featuring a foreign gang aka the Black Lotus Triad, and a military veteran who was a POW for 13 months while his whole unit's service record got wiped clean. That's just scratching the surface of some of these wild storylines and they're shot like a cutscene out of a video game, so if you prefer realism in pro wrestling, Lucha Underground is just not the show for you. Yes! You're thinking like like a man. I'm not a man. I'm a machine.
One thing worth bringing up is that storylines usually culminate at the end of each season's finale, Ultima Lucha, which is pretty much the show's WrestleMania or Starcade or Triple Mania if you're familiar with Triple A. Ultima Lucha is also used to plant the seeds for the following season's storylines. Championships also play a huge role in the series. There are three championships throughout the show's lifespan. First, you're introduced to the Lucha Underground Championship, which is their world title. Later on in the series, a Trios Championship is implemented for six-person tag matches. And finally, the Gift of the Gods Championship. In order to earn the Gift of the Gods Championship, there's a series of matches to determine a holder of an individual ancient medallion. Once all ancient medallions are claimed, the individuals in possession of these medallions compete in a match and a winner is awarded the Gift of the Gods Championship. What makes the Gift of the Gods title so lucrative is that it can be traded in at any time for a shot at the Lucha Underground World Championship. Once it is traded in, the cycle for the Gift of the Gods belt is repeated at the authority figure's discretion. There are also a handful of tournaments with their own rewards for the luchadors to compete in. If you decide to pass on the show, you'll sorely miss out on some of the absolute best in-ring action of this century. There are an abundance of variety match types to keep you engaged, such as Aztec Warfare, Lucha Underground's own spin on a battle royal where the final two participants engage in a standard one-on-one -on -one match to determine a definitive winner, cage matches, no moss, which is basically an I quit match, grave consequences or a casket match, and my personal favorite, all night long, which is just an Iron Man match but typically takes up the duration of an entire episode considering the episodes are an hour long. There are a few match types that I haven't mentioned that I'll keep under wraps for spoilers sake. I finally got around to watching this show a few years after its demise and it still had dozens of moments in the matches that left my jaw on the floor. Back elbow, Marty trying to get out of the way here. Sent in, Phoenix follows in. The action is just that damn good and a lot of the credit has to go to the tremendously talented roster. My name is Son of Havoc and I will win the Cueto Cup. There he is! There's my favorite white boy! If you've seen some footage of Lucha Underground already, you might have recognized some familiar faces featured in the product. You have guys who reached mild success in the WWE and other organizations such as John Morrison, Chavo Guerrero, Hernandez of LAX and TNA fame, Paul London, and Justin Gabriel, now known as PJ Black. But what's amazing about the roster is not only the talent who used the show to help revitalize their career like some of the aforementioned names, but also the people who used the show as a platform to help launch their careers to new heights which helped them get to where they are today. Prince Puma, Killshot, and King Cuerno, for example. Besides visually identifying them from their distinct tattoos, if you've never seen the show, these names might sound pretty foreign to you. But under their mask obviously reveals their true identity. Before Lucha Underground, Prince Puma, who can arguably be considered as the poster boy for Lucha Underground, was making quite a name for himself on the independent circuit under the name Ricochet, which is the ring name he currently uses in the WWE. King Cuerno was famously known in Mexico as El Hijo del Fantasma before Lucha Underground and is now enjoying mainstream success as Santos Escobar in the WWE, while Killshot, who previously wrestled for the WWE from 2019 until 2021 as Isaiah Swerve Scott, is now a big time player in AEW as the leader of the heel stable Mogul Embassy, going by the name Swerve Strickland and even dropped a mention of his previous persona as Killshot on AEW television. What's a buckshot to a kill shot? When talking about using Lucha Underground as a stepping stone for wrestlers' careers, it's hard not to mention the likes of Pentagon Jr., Ray Phoenix, AR Fox, Willie Mack, and Vibora, now known as Luchasaurus, among others. This show is the catalyst for my fandom of the Lucha Brothers as I wasn't too familiar with their work before this. They are, in my opinion, the heart and soul of Lucha Underground. Again, that's just scratching the surface of the amazing talent. You also have Lucha legends such as Blue Demon Jr., Dr. Wagner, and Rey Mysterio. Big meaty hoss men like Brian Cage, Mil Muertes, and Jeff Cobb who assumes the role of Matanza Cueto, the sadistic psychopathic masked brother of El Jefe Dario Cueto, who we will get to in a minute. The female talent on the show knocked it out of the park too. 
going toe to toe with not only each other but with the male talent as well in intergender matches showcasing that the women are treated as equals upon entering the temple. A couple of my personal favorite Joshi wrestlers Io Shirai and Kairi Sane are featured on the show and are currently some of the most popular talent in the WWE today. There are plenty of other wrestlers who deserve their flowers that I haven't mentioned. This roster is just absolutely stacked. Of course, with this being the pro wrestling industry, there are some wrestlers who have done quite the damage to their reputation since the show's inception. But luckily, not many that I remember really do anything too significant in the long run, with the exception of Sexy Star, who plays a pivotal role in some of the key storylines throughout the show. Lucha Underground's on-screen authority figure is El Jefe Dario Cueto, a brash man with skewed morals and in kayfabe is implied to have an interest in a particular bump. Take a bump. No, not that kind of bump. That kind of bump. There's one of your nuts just hanging out of your shorts. The character of Dario Cueto is portrayed by Spanish actor Luis Fernandez Gil, who does a terrific job. Another on-screen personality worth mentioning is Melissa Santos, the ring announcer who oozes charisma during her introductions for the wrestlers adding her own unique flair as they make their way to the squared circle. One good example of this is her disgust in announcing Marty the Moth Martinez as he creeps on her while she's just trying to do her job. The following lucha is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, accompanied by Mariposa from La Jolla, California, Marty the Moth Martinez. Creepy, deranged. Disconnected. These are some words used to describe Marty the Mock Martinez. This little touch adds so much to Marty's character and makes you feel sympathetic for Melissa for having to put up with his revolting actions each time he needs an introduction. One small gripe I do have for this show, however, is the commentary team that involves Matt Stryker and Vampiro. It's a fairly small nitpick considering Matt Stryker himself does an overall solid job on the play-by-play -play aside from a few annoying quirks, but Vampiro's commentary just feels off at times. No personal disrespect to the guy, it's just that his timing is pretty awful and he tends to ramble. It's like he ran his commentary through two different languages on Google Translate and then translated it back to English. Listen to that, man. Hang on. My straw cradle. Wow. They call that the casita in Mexico, you know, because you're building a house. You're rolling around, you put the foundations, and then you pull them up like the walls of Jericho. But he came crumbling down even without the trumpets. <laughs> what did you say, nigga? Now, I'm not saying he's objectively a bad commentator. His commentary is just not my cup of tea. But if there is one or two good things I'll say about his commentary, it's that he does have an interesting personality, especially when he's pantomiming to the crowd and camera, and his occasional one-liners can get a chuckle or two out of me. He also had a banger of a theme song in WCW. Not that that has anything to do with Lucha Underground. <laughs> Nonetheless, the tremendous character work and cinematography, combined with the action from the diverse, uber-athletic talent of the roster, is the absolute bread and butter of this show. Also, shout out to the bands that open up the show. They usually kill it too. So, what exactly happened to Lucha Underground, and where would you be able to watch it today? To answer that second question, Lucha Underground can be purchased on Apple TV or Amazon Prime by each individual episode or by season. It's a bit pricey by today's standard, especially considering the first couple of seasons used to be on Netflix in 2018 until it got pulled in November of that same year, and the entire series was viewable free of charge on Tubi until it got removed on that platform in March of 2022. However, I'm sure someplace on the internet has it archived for your viewing pleasures if you're not willing to shelf out about a couple hundred dollars for the entire series, which in this economy I can't blame you. To get to the bottom line of what happened to Lucha Underground can be chalked up to a pretty simple explanation. Business-wise and financially, it was poorly mismanaged. 
Wrestlers signed to Lucha Underground contracts were excluded from performing anywhere else, which was a huge deal breaker considering the pay was flat out insulting. According to the Sportster.com, the median salary of the talent equated to about $4,000 per year. Yikes. This alongside the exclusivity aspects of the contracts led to multiple talents filing lawsuits against the company in order to get out of the awful contracts. Despite the critical praise, ratings also took a nosedive as the seasons went on. The lack of live shows and tours, virtually no merchandising, poor advertising, an excess of the budget going to the production costs, and the previously mentioned atrocious talent contracts leading to lawsuits caused the company to hemorrhage money. I declare bankruptcy! Whoa! Huge news! Bombshell! Alas, after only four seasons, Lucha Underground was officially six feet under. In my opinion, while the idea and the execution of the show was astounding, it was also just too large for its budget. It shot for the stars, but without consistent financial backing and better business decisions, Lucha Underground crashed and burned before it could really make it to the moon. Despite this, pro wrestling is art in a variety of aspects, whether it's the storytelling, athleticism, maneuvers, imagery, etc. Lucha Underground hit on all aspects for me. But now that the show is all said and done, is it worth watching today? Personally, yes, absolutely. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know what your favorite match was if you maybe already watched Lucha Underground. Personally, my favorite was Killshot vs. Dante Fox from Ultima Lucha Trace. But that is all I have for today, so till next time.